Okay, so now we begin our slow, steady process of scraping the excess glaze off of the surface of the plate so that only your carved lines are filled with color. I use the metal rib, I flex it over my thumb, and I make sure I am using the rounded side of the rib, not the flat side. And I will pull the tool down in the same direction of the carving. So if my line is coming down towards me that I carved, I will pull the metal rib tool in the same direction, down towards me. You want to work with your lines that you carved. Your plate should be leather hard for this. If your clay is still sticky, or your clay is still, is still taking impressions from your finger or anything like that, it is not ready to scrape and you will ruin your plate. So make sure the plate is cold to the touch, but is stiff and is not sticky. If I were to hold on to the rim of this plate, try to bend it, I would crack it. That is the stage your plate needs to be at. You also need to make sure that your underglaze has completely dried. So you've done your three to four coats and your underglaze has dried and then you scrape. If your underglaze is still wet, when you scrape, you're going to drag that glaze out of your carved lines and it's going to create a bigger mess. Every once in a while, you can see in this video that I am grabbing a glaze brush and it's a clean glaze brush and I'm just kind of brushing the crumbs out of my carved lines that appear and you will see I'm often rotating the plate I'm picking it up and kind of blowing the crumbs out and working in whatever direction the line was carved take this slow and steady This is not something that you want to rush. Much of ceramics too is learning decorative techniques. And like we talked about at the beginning of this lesson, this is a technique that is very important and is used in many cultures. In Japan, they call it the Mishima technique when you look at Korean pottery or Chinese pottery, they refer to it as slip and lay, but you will see it in many cultures. I'm just taking off little bits at a time. You want to make sure that you're not taking too much off. Sometimes you can overdo it and actually make some of your lines disappear a little bit. And that's okay. You can come and fix that with a little fine tipped brush, which you'll see me do on this plate as well. If I can't get into an area because maybe the plate is curving upwards, I might switch to my ribbon tool or a smaller scraping tool so I can fit into the smaller areas because my metal rib does not always fit. And as you're scraping, you may not get every single tiny amount of color off of the surface of the plate. You might have little specks of color that show up. That is okay. You can go over that with a different color, but you want to try and get as much as you can off of the surface. You definitely should not see any gouge marks in your plate. If you are gouging or actually removing 
chunks of clay, you are not holding the tool correctly and you are probably scraping when the clay is too soft. So always kind of flex that tool and just go over the surface. A good idea is to go back and forth. So maybe you have your second plate drying and you have your colors drying inside of the carvings while you're scraping this plate. So that by, way by the time you're done with this plate, you can go and scrape your second plate. So you're kind of working back and forth. When you are doing your color fill, you want to make sure that you're leaving the plastic off of the plate while that color dries. And then once the color is dry, then you put plastic back over the top of your plate. Otherwise, it will never dry. Almost done. There we go. Clean it up. You've got your lines filled.